it's live we're here hello good morning everybody we are here for our very very first flipboard flip blogger broadcast and we are so excited to have you join us i'm sitting here with jen de la vega who is a community manager here at flipboard i'm jessica rosenberg i'm a blogger you may know me as uh, at kika rose all over the internet or uh, my, from my blog, It's Jessica's Life. And we also have here with us Mia Q, who is coming around to say hi. Mia is head of curation and editorial here at Flipboard. And we are super excited to have you join us so we can teach you all sorts of awesome things about Flipboard and how it can really help bloggers both on a professional and on a personal level. So uh, bear with us, this is our first time using Google Hangouts for a webinar, so we're still trying to figure out some of the ropes and we've got this. So there are two ways that we would love for you to submit questions. We're going to have an official Q&A section at the very end, but if you have questions in the meantime, uh, you can ask them in the Q&A section of the Hangout or go to Twitter and tweet out your questions to Flipboard with the hashtag FlipBlogger and we'll get them that way. All right. Good stuff. Shall we get started? Yeah. Jen, do you want to say something before we get started? Oh, I'm also a food blogger. Oh, my God, I forgot. <laughs> that was like the most important part. Jen blogs about sandwiches, and who doesn't love a good sandwich? Randwiches. Random sandwiches. That's, what it, that's, that's my it favorite. <laughs> what can I put on it today? Yeah. All right, so let's get this party started. So the very first thing that we wanted to discuss um, Hold on one second. Oh, there we are. So first things first, like let's get this really clear. What exactly is Flipboard? So we've heard a lot of things about uh, from different bloggers when we've been starting to uh, say, hey, we're, Flipboard is working with a lot of bloggers. We're trying to make the platform as useful and for bloggers, get a lot of feedback from people to see what would be helpful and how bloggers want to work with us. Um, and one of the questions that people have asked is, wait, blog Flipboard launched in 2011. What exactly is it? What can it do for me? So the first thing is that Flipboard is a social magazine. To be more specific, it's your social magazine. So it's one place that you can use to keep up on all of your interests. Uh, it's where great stories that move the world forward get shared every day, all the time. And for bloggers, more specifically, it's a platform where you, where you can share your own stories, and we know you have a lot of them. Um, by the numbers, uh, Flipboard is 34,000 topics scanning 26.5 million magazines. So we're going to go into details in a little bit about what magazines are, but uh, that's just to start with that, 26.5 million magazines. Um, Flipboard just announced that uh, they have 70 million monthly active users, and that scans over uh, 300 million mobile devices. So pretty impressive numbers. I, that's a lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people. Um, as you can see here, Flipboard is available both on the web and on mobile, as we said. So iOS, Windows, and Mac devices, as well as the web. And there are a lot of reasons to be both on the laptop, on the computer, as well as in the app, which we can talk to you more about in a minute. All right, how are we doing? Any questions so far? Remember, if you have questions, leave them in the Q&A. Mia is checking them out. Or you can tweet them. No questions, we're good? Oh, all right, Q&A is not working so well. So if you have questions, tweet them, please, to at Flipboard and hashtag your question FlipBlogger so we can be sure to see them, okay? Forget the Q&A. Skip the Q&A, not happening. These, we're learning, this is good. This is good. All right, so all the different platforms are there. And now the other question that has often come up is bloggers say, listen, sounds great, sounds awesome, it looks beautiful, but between all the different platforms, I just don't know if I have time for one more. So what's in it for me? What does Flipboard offer that bloggers really, truly can't get elsewhere? Well, truth is, because Flipboard is not just a social media platform, it's a social media, it's a social magazine, it offers something completely different than what you've experienced before. First of all, we offer you a place to get increased traffic to your posts and an extended network of readers. You spend a lot of time writing incredible content. 
we want to give you just one more place to share that content with the world, a whole bunch more readers who are really going to be interested in what you have to say, who are going to share it with their readers, and it just gives your content a new platform to live on. What else? Um, well, if you're in search of great content to inspire you, to add to your blog, uh, you need some inspiration, you need something to write about, you just want something to share with your readers, on Flipboard, you get a treasure trove of curated content that's constantly updated, hot off the press, all in one place, usually in your pocket or on your laptop or on your computer, really easy to access. And it's content that's easy to customize and organize. So you get to decide what you see. So unlike the Facebook algorithm that changes every other day and delivers something new and you have no idea what you're looking at, we make it possible for you to know exactly what you want to see and to see it when you want to see it. And last, but definitely not least, Flipboard offers a very unique packaging tool called the magazine. Remember, the 26.5 million of them, but you get to make as many as you want. So the packaging tool magazine, it can be embedded on your site, it can be shared on social, it can be kept private for your own reference. And we're going to go more into detail about what magazines are and how they can really be a game changer for bloggers. We also have a link to a Mag Making 101, how to make your very first magazine that Mia will share shortly on Twitter. So just check out that support. It's very detailed. It includes a lot of screenshots from my computer. All right, so there are a million different ways that we can use Flipboard. We've isolated six ways that we think is really, really useful for bloggers. Um, again, both from a personal level and from a professional level. The very, very first is that Flipboard allows you to stay on top of trending news in your niche and beyond. So when you get started on Flipboard, and again, um, we're going to go, right now we're talking about like the whys and we'll go into the hows in a little bit. So we'll give you some more details about how to get started. This is more of like why we think it's really, really important for you to do so. So the first thing is on Flipboard, you can follow really specific topics. So like politics, travel, parenting. Um, if you're really into latte art, there's a section on latte art, like any, any topic, 34,000 to be specific. Um, you follow the topics that interest you. So you always know what's happening in the areas that you're passionate about. What topics do you follow, Jen? I follow recipes. Mm, recipes are good. And I also follow design. Oh, design, yes. Not you can get designer. really lost in the design section. <laughs> it really helps my website look really great, actually. I learned a lot from it. Yeah, so you're following website design, not like home design. No, <laughs> no home design. <laughs> All web design um, and uh, places where I can get free fonts. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you could have entire magazines just with fonts. Yeah. Fonts are like an addiction for bloggers. Um, I personally follow a lot of uh, geeky stuff, geek TV, um, sci-fi, futuristic stuff, all sorts of stuff like that. So I follow a lot of that fun stuff. Um, one of the great parts about Flipblog, Flipboard is that it's like a constantly updating newspaper that just lives in your pocket or on your computer. So if there's breaking news, something happens, very quickly you'll see a lot of articles on the same topic happening and showing up in your Flipboard stream. So you never miss an article that might be interesting to you, might inspire a post, might be interesting to your readers that you'd want to share with them. So we are showing you a couple different bloggers that we wanted to showcase during this to show you how they do it. The first one we're going to talk about, you'll hear, see here on the side of the screen, Tawana Brown-Smith. She's a travel blogger. She travels all over the world, and she writes gorgeous posts with gorgeous photos about it. And she recently went to London, so she created a magazine sharing her love of London. Um, she follows a whole bunch of travel things, and she has magazines that are all about travel. So you can find out more about Mexico, her trip to Costa Rica, where she went on a wellness trip recently, uh, Harry Potter's London, to be more specific, so the magazines can be as specific or as diverse as you would like them to be. Um, if you want some inspiration on how to do that, I would definitely recommend following her. All right, all right. Come on, MacBook. It's painful. All right. Next, second thing that we recommend Flipboard for is for research. So you sit down, you have an idea for a post, 
every blogger does this, so many ideas, it's all in your head, and then you sit down and it's a total blank, you're not really sure what you're gonna say, you're not really sure what angle you wanna take, all of a sudden, you're having some doubt about your knowledge about a topic, maybe you wanna do a little bit more research before you get going. Well, Flipboard is a really great place to do that research because we share the best of the posts on a specific topic. So when you're getting ready and you're writing a post, you sit down, open up Flipboard, and check it out. What have others written about on this topic? What is driving strong engagement on that topic? So maybe you have this angle that you want to write about. Go see, has anybody else written about it? Have they maybe uh, written about it and it's not really getting much traction, but a slightly different angle is getting a lot more traction? You can really get a feel for how well your post will be received. What is the dissenting opinion or what can you respond to? Because sometimes it's good to be able to say, well, that person wrote this. I would like to say my point of view is this. So to refer back to what others have written, really handy to look on Flipboard to see what people have written about. And then also, who could you quote? You might want to quote an expert in the field. You might want to quote another blogger. Who could you quote in your story to make that post a little bit more robust, a little bit more engaging? And maybe you just really, really want to write a post and you just don't know enough of the background to the story. What can you get more details about? By doing a search on Flipboard, you can get some of that background information, some of those details that you might want that will help you write a more robust and well-rounded post. So definitely really helpful in that sense. You can stay on top of trending news. You can stay on, step on top of niche info. And then you can also do some great research. So this blogger over here to the right, her name is Sarah Kimmel. And Sarah writes about family tech and other things like that on her blog, sarahkimmel.com. And tech is kind of scary for people. So she writes a lot about articles about how to manage tech, how tech can organize your life, how tech can uh, help you work out, the gamer's corner, different things like that. Um, her Flipboard profile is a collection of ideas for that, but it also helps her organize it. She has some secret magazines that she uses to put uh, articles that will serve as reference for her. So hold on, we have a question from the audience. Okay, maybe we're gonna hold on to this question for the end. Um, Jen, do you use any specific parts of Flipboard for researching food articles that you're writing? Absolutely, I have a magazine called To Cook, and it's a sort of visual checklist for me um, when I get to the weekend and I wanna, I don't know exactly what I'm going to be cooking, I refer to the magazine to see what's been trending and see if I can try to riff off of these mm -hmm. recipes that are in that magazine. Probably helpful to see like, oh, sometimes there's some recipes that for some reason people go crazy over and to be able to see, oh, what was it about that to feed whatever you're gonna write next is really helpful. So our next point is that you can use Flipboard to grow your online community. <clears throat> now, aside from finding really great things to write about, that is the second hottest issue for bloggers is, <clears throat> thank you, is finding people to read what you have to write. Mm. Hot work, all this talking. <laughs> So finding people to read everything you've had to write is really one of those things. Like it is one thing to write it, getting it in front of as many eyeballs as possible is the next challenge. So we all know this. Anybody who's been active in this space knows the best way to grow your online community is by supporting members of that community, right? So you support the people around you. They're going to support you. There's a lot of, you know, I scratch your back, you scratch my back, you promote this, I promote that. Very helpful. There are a couple things you can do on Flipboard to really help support your fellow bloggers. One, you can flip posts from all over the blogosphere and create magazines to highlight them. Um, this blogger over here to the right, her name is Stacy Teat, and she has a cool magazine called Creative Mamas, where she collects posts from other bloggers who are writing creative blog posts. So it could be how to make aprons, things to entertain your kids. She puts all of these articles together in this post and it helps send traffic to other bloggers in the space, which is really a wonderful thing to do. The other thing you can do is follow fellow bloggers and readers 
um, see who else is posting things in your niche in the comments that, in the content that you're interested in follow those people see what else they're sharing reflip what they're saying and help grow that in sphere of influence like that um, leave comments on flips leave comments start conversations engage people on the things that you flip into your own magazines start conversations you know one of the greatest parts about reading magazines online is that there are comments you can engage you can have a conversation with someone instead of just saying hey i read this and then leaving it blank you can say hey i read this and this is how i feel about it and start a conversation you really really can't do that when you're reading the new yorker on your couch it's hard to click on the page not to say that my children don't try all the time so as i said this is stacy teat stacy uh has a blog called kids stuff world the name is very self-explanatory uh, she blogs about all sorts of different things and she collects a lot of those blog posts in different magazines like kids and parenting live your life redefining beauty in those magazines she has articles that she's written but she also has articles that other people have written on the similar topics so if you were to follow her and you were to say oh I really am interested in healthy living then I'm gonna follow that and then you'd see some of the other things that she thinks would be of interest to you now the nice thing is, let's say you really like Stacy's posts about living your life. You really cannot handle another article about kids and parenting. You can choose to unfollow specific magazines. So you can only follow the magazines that you want to know more about and not the stuff you don't want to know about, which is good, right? There's like some people. Yeah, it's customizing your experience. <laughs> it's <laughs> love the it. customizing experience. It's really cool how no two um, Flipboard streams are at all the same. Everybody has slightly different interests, slightly different topics they follow, and so everybody's Flipboard experience is totally 100% unique, which is cool. All right, four, our fourth point is how to grow your online influence, growing your reach, right? It's the other thing, you've gotten your readers, you've gotten your posts, now you wanna become known as an expert in your field, and they, true way to do that is to say this is how many people I can reach on a daily basis on a monthly basis so we want to help you grow that influence um, one of the simplest ways that we found is to get together with people and create collaborative magazines so when you organize articles on Flipboard and it's not just articles it's videos tweets uh, images even sound files you can organize a lot of different content on Flipboard you can create you organize them in magazines and you can create collaborative magazines from two with lots of different people two people four people 20 people a lot of different people so if you are creating magazines so if jen and i created a magazine about sandwiches mm -hmm. or about something else maybe we could do sweet sandwiches i like sweets okay use, like, I'll allow dessert it. <laughs> it's not only tell a banana it could be it could be um all of a sudden everything i flip in there is going to be seen by Jen's audience and everything Jen flips and there's going to be seen by my audience and instantly we've doubled our reach. So if you were to find a couple bloggers who write similar topics or have similar areas of interest, create these joint magazines with them, you would grow instantly grow your influence because you'd be exposing your content to their readers and they would be exposing their content to yours. Very very handy tool, especially when you consider that Magazines can be embedded in um, web, in the sidebars of websites. We'll tell you a little bit more about that, but that really instantly grows that audience in a really organic, authentic feeling way. Um, when you leave comments on flips, as we said earlier, and you engage with Flipboard users, it's a neat way to find new people to follow. Who's left a smart comment? Who seems to have an opinion that you are interested in learning more about? Go ahead, follow them. All of a sudden, you'll start seeing flips that they flip, seeing things that they find interesting, and grow that reach that way. You can connect with Flipboard fans beyond Flipboard. Um, we have a lot of followers on Twitter and on other social media streams. So if you follow on Twitter the FlipBlogger hashtag, you'll see who else is engaging with the community and find new people to follow that way. You follow them, they follow you back, bada boom new followers, expanded reach. All right, and last but definitely not least for this, but this part is actually really, really important for bloggers. When you're writing your blog posts, make sure that you include really clear metadata on your posts. So 
it's that little section, the SEO section at the end when you're done writing it all. And if you include clear metadata, it makes it much easier for search engines to pick up on what you're writing and share it when people are doing searches. And that is just as true for the Flipboard search. So if you are writing a post about Shetland ponies who really love latte art, you should definitely have Shetland ponies, latte art, somewhere written in the metadata. <laughs> I'm cracking everyone up. Sometimes ponies like coffee, no? They like candy bars better. Maybe it's Shetland ponies who like candy bars. <laughs> um, so that really would help your posts to get picked up by the Flipboard search engine when people are searching for something. It'll make sure that makes it more likely for uh, your articles to show up when people are looking for a certain content stream. All right, so over here, we have a magazine featured that, like I said earlier, that collaborative magazine. It's written by both Awesomeism Mom, who is a blogger who has a blog called Awesomeism Mom, which is about living a life with autism but making the best of it, and Jeanette Spire. And they collaborate on this magazine called The ABCs of Living on This Planet. So they both share articles about healthy living, about how to really enjoy this planet, how to take care of it, and things like that. So you'll see um, Awesomeism Mom, they have a whole bunch of magazines about healthy living tips and how to live outdoors and how, you know, all sorts of different things that might be helpful for somebody who was parenting a special needs child or even just your own old, a regular run-of-the-mill child because parenting, as we all agree, is hard. So there you have that. So and our next idea, wait, before that, I did want to ask Jen a question. Jen, have you found that you've met some really interesting people on Flipboard since you started sharing? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there is this one woman named Michelle de Villiers, and she, we don't really have a lot of things in common, mm -hmm. interest-wise, but she is an illustrator. Oh, cool. Uh, and she really loves science, and so she draws these really fun science puns and puts them in her magazines. Oh, I gotta follow her. Yeah, I she's, she's like a fun person to follow. <laughs> it's really uh, neat the range of people you end up following and the range of people you end up getting to know. Our fifth point is also something that's very typical for bloggers. So there you are. You're like, I'm gonna post three times a week. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm going to write something. This is what I'm going to write about. In your head, you have a list of millions of things you really, really feel are burning topics you want to write about. You sit down at your computer. You finally get 20 minutes of quiet, and there it blinks, the cursor. Blinkity, blinkity, blink, and you have no idea. It's torture. It's torture, right? <laughs> this is when you start typing, coffee is good. I like coffee, and then you're like, I can't write that post. So I might have written that post in the past. Um, Flipboard is a really great spot to collect ideas for future posts. So yes, we still encourage you to have a notebook in your pocket so that when you're driving around, or maybe not while you're driving, don't write while you're driving, that's not safe. But maybe when you're sitting at the coffee shop, you can jot down some ideas and you have a list of ongoing ideas. Equally easy though, you can use Flipboard magazines, which can be kept private or shared, um, to collect inspiring articles, images, photos, videos, songs, um, tweets, anything that you think might be able to maybe inspire you to write something. Just a note, just an image. You can even um, take a picture with your phone and flip that picture into a magazine. So say you see something at the bookstore, there's a book and it's ridiculous and you really want to take a picture, click, take that picture, flip it into a magazine of future ideas for future posts, and then it'll be there as a quick reminder. It's really very handy for that. Um, it also, some bloggers use a Flipboard magazine uh, to keep track of really great headlines to inspire you when you're trying to come up with your own headlines because I don't know about you guys, but I can spend an hour writing amazing blog posts and then I come up with the title and I'm like, ah, ah, coffee, latte. It's been a really hard morning. <laughs> so that's a really neat thing. So keep a magazine, flip anything that catches your fancy, a headline that makes you tap, maybe um, a cool idea. You could do a screen grab if you get an email with a great email subject line, flip that in there so that when you are sitting down and looking for your own ideas, you can go back and be like, oh, I clicked on that headline because this, oh, that was engaging before because of that. And you'll start to get your own style of headlines that really work. 
You can also use Flipboard magazines to organize reference materials or research pieces. So if you're working on a bigger blog post, something that needs a little bit more meat, and you're collecting ideas, you can do that. I've been writing a business blog for a coworker, and I never went to business school, so I'm finding she assigns me these things, these topics, and I'm like, well, as soon as I look up the name of what you're asking me to write about, I'm sure I can write about it. And I found that it's easier if I go and I read 20 articles, really learn the subject matter, and then go back and write the article based on what I've learned. Collecting all those articles in a Flipboard magazine means that when I want to go back and quote someone, or when I want to go back and double check a fact, I know exactly where those articles are going to be, and it's going to be super easy, much easier than if I had just used the bookmark function on my phone or on my uh, computer, because what if I'm on a different computer, or what if there's 500 bookmarks in there because I've never cleaned them out? I'm not saying I have, but um, it's possible. Um, and then there are a lot of bloggers who like to do roundup type posts. So the top 10 shoes of the runway, maybe that's what you want to write about, but you've only found five that you really want to feature. Collect different things like that in a, po in a magazine so that when you're finally hit that magic number of how many you want to link, it's all there, super easy for you to pull them out and write the blog post. You could even actually embed the magazine directly in the blog post so people could also go find other links to it. Why do you, do you use magazines like that at all? Uh, yeah, to make a uh, roundup post. Roundups, yeah. Kind of this week in, in food science. <laughs> this week in food science, I like it. That's really cool. It's really handy. I have a couple magazines like that. Um, I do another post with, I work with another company. They do um, a lot of influencer marketing, and we have a whole magazine where we collect articles about influencer marketing, and that feeds our business blog. So it's different things. Anything new in the space, we collect it, put it together, and then when we come together uh, to put together our uh, editorial magazine for the month, editorial calendar for the month, we know exactly what we want to write about. I'm featuring here this uh, photographer whose name is Matt Hart. He also has a really gorgeous blog uh, of all his photography. And he has a magazine called Photography Trips, which he has put together in an effort to have all the places he wants to take his camera on a walk in one place. So he doesn't plan trips with family. He plans trips with his camera. Probably a lot fewer arguments that way, to be fair. And he's just collecting ideas, places he wants to go, photos that inspire him about places he wants to go, articles that he's read about places he might want to go. It all goes in there. And then when he's ready to go on this trip where he's trying to decide where he's taking his camera next, he goes to that magazine, he takes a look, sees what inspires him. And then he puts it all, the photos he has taken, he puts them in a magazine. Uh, it's gorgeous. His Flipboard profile is absolutely gorgeous. I really, really endorse you going going there, getting lost in what he has to say. Like, it's beautiful stuff. Really slice of life photography. All right, and la not even, la yes, last but not least, Flipboard gives all of your content a little bit more room to shine and a little longer shelf life, which is good. So you've sit and sat there, you've written your blog post, you've put a lot of effort, sometimes some sweat, blood, and tears into it, and then you share it, and you share it on Facebook, and it hits four people, and you share it on Pinterest, and maybe it hits two people. And if you're lucky, somebody stumbles it, and it hits maybe three people. And then you go into the next post, and not that many people have seen the thing that you've written that you really wish they would write. So let me put this for example. I've been blogging since 2005. I'm sorry. I've been blogging since 2004. We're up to 12 years of blog content. So if somebody had a spare year of their life, they could go through my entire archive. I think there's a good thousand posts in there. You could spend a lot of time. You would find stories about my children's early childhood, about my progression through life as a working mom. You'd find all these stories. And you'd probably find a lot to read about. But say, for instance, you really just wanted to see the stories about my oldest child. Well, then I made it easy for you. I put all of my favorite stories about my oldest child into a magazine called Stories About C. And I put all the magazine into a magazine, all of my favorite stories about my youngest child, who goes by little L on my blog. And then I put into a magazine all of my stories about the really wonderful, wise, 
insightful things they've told me over the years. And I put all of those in the sidebar of my blog so that if somebody is coming to my blog, they don't have to dig through 12 years of archive to go find these nuggets that I want to make sure they see. The magazine is really an amazing package that allows you to put that content together to make it easy for your readers to see. It also makes it really easy for you to share a whole package of content with people. So say you very specifically had sweet, crispy sandwiches you wanted to share, you could have a magazine about that and be able to share that really easily. Or if you had your signature sandwiches, like the top 10 sandwiches, people always come back, you could create a magazine and say, these are the best, these are the favorite sandwiches, very easy to do it. I've spent a lot of time over the last couple of years thinking, I really one day when I have a lot of time, I'm gonna sit down and put an ebook together of my favorite blog posts. And then I get overwhelmed with the thought of having to go copy and paste, having to organize the content, having to do the layout. Flipboard does it in two seconds. You click, you flip a magazine, an article into a magazine. You can go into the editorial editor section of the magazine to decide which photo is going to be the uh, key image, the image on the magazine. You can organize the order of the posts that are in there, and then bam, it's done. It's all put together. You can add that link in the email uh, signature, on the blog sidebar. You can share it on Facebook. You can share it everywhere. It makes it really, really easy to deliver content in a nice, neat package that people can enjoy. It's also a really cool way to put together your evergreen content. Make sure that stuff that lives really well together is easy to be found. I have a friend who does a blog about finance, and she has really great tips about how to get out of debt. She could put all of that in one easy magazine, how to get out of debt easily. That could be in her email signature. It could be in her bio on a lot of different social media sites. Link to it. All of those posts are in one place, nice and easy to access. And it makes it really nice. Um, it features the photos in a beautiful way. The layout is really nice. It's really easy to read. The Flipboard uh, designers have really made it feel like you're flipping through a magazine when you're reading. Very, very cool, especially if you're the kind of person who has issues with the cluttering of certain blogs and different things like that. Um, so as I said, you can embed your magazines in your website sidebar or in your blog post. So you see on mine that's there, that, that's my blog off to the side there, if you hadn't guessed. Uh, it's on the sidebar. You can, um, we'll show you another way to do it in a second. Some people have them in the footer. You have them on the footer on your blog, right, Jen? Yeah, on Ravages we have, I have four magazines at the bottom, and two of which are two kinds of portfolio styles. Mm -hmm. So one magazine is posts that I've styled, like food photos, and then I have one called Ravages Fan Mail, which is like fan photos from people who have eaten my food. That's so, so awesome. I have that right at the bottom of my website. So it's neat, because it really <laughs> gives your readers like this whole broad vision. It's so far beyond what you just post. It's like the community aspect of it. I love it. Also, it's hard to take pictures of sandwiches. So. It is. Surprisingly so, I would assume. <laughs> Very hard. Um, the magazine function also allows you to take advantage of seasonal events. So. Say every single year you write a post about Mother's Day. Every Mother's Day you could share that magazine and be like, and this is the history of our Mother's Day. Or let's say you have some really cute 4th of July photos. I'm just saying that. It's coming up. It's coming up faster than you would think. Um, you could share that really easily and maybe go in, ask your friends, say, who's written about this? What can we do? Let's put together a magazine about 4th of July posts. And then you can share the magazine link and give access to a lot of different uh, readers to those posts. I'm putting together a list of life after 40. If anybody wants to write about it, let me know. I'm going to put together a really great magazine. It's going to be called This is 40. I'm excited about it. Um, this is another example of embedding magazines on the blog. This is Beth Bleckerman's blog, Tech Mamas. Beth's magazines are not just magazines rounding up her own posts, but they're magazines of things she's found across the internet that she thinks would be interesting to her audience. So if you click on that social media and growth marketing uh, 
magazine, you're going to see some things she's written, but you're also going to see a whole bunch of really interesting things that she thinks are going to be valuable, beneficial to her readers and her audience. The magazine function used this way gives your gives you a chance to really give a full experience to your audience because often blogs is very are very one dimensional one opinion and then readers have to go somewhere else to get the bigger picture through magazines like this you can help your readers not have to search hard You'd be like oh you love this let me show you other things that are really interesting if you are at all interested in technology or in uh, parenting and technology um, I highly recommend you follow uh, Beth on Flipboard. She's got some great things that she shares. So this is my profile. Um, as you can see, it's a wide range. I too like food. If you actually follow my foodie flips uh, board, you're gonna find a lot of cute food. How could you not resist? That is the cutest cupcake in the world. Not cupcake, donut. Look Hello at Kitty it, just donut. look at it. I'm into it. Um, this was an article about a girl who goes around the world and she takes pictures of food in the place where she's eating it. So this Hello Kitty donut is eaten in the square where she found it. In Tokyo. Um, I also, as you can see, I collect things that I'm gonna flip into the Flip Blogger program. Um, I keep an eye on all that stuff. So I'll, we'll tell you more about that in one second. And then down here we have Beth's profile. Um, again, Beth sh follows lots of different topics. She shares a lot of really great content. Uh, all sorts of angles from the funny and humorous to the techie, more stu uh, techie, more techie, more appy. She, like a lot of us, is steeped in the um, tech world here in Silicon Valley. So we're very influenced by that. All right. So that was a whole lot of why Flipboard and why and how Flipboard can make a big difference to your blogging experience. And now we just want to walk you through a couple of the basics of how to use Flipboard. Do we have any questions we want to answer now? Or should we wait until the end? We're good. And we have questions. So remember, if you have any questions, tweet at Flipboard and make sure you tag it with the da uh, hashtag FlipBlogger hashtag. And we will answer them in a few minutes when we get to the Q&A section. All right. Next, learn the basics of Flipboard. So Flipboard is actually very intuitive, very easy to use. You set up your profile. Um, you can set it up uh, through Facebook, very easy. Um, although I do find that when I do that, I never know what my password is anywhere. But so if Facebook ever goes away, I'll be in big trouble. But what? Uh, you can actually log in with Twitter and Google Plus. Twitter and Google Plus too, or you can just put in your email and use a password. So lots of different ways to do that. Um, once you start, you're going to be asked to find to select different content topics that you're interested in. Did, did we mention there's a couple thousand that you can choose from? If you don't see exactly what you're interested in, you can just type it into the search bar. So if your interests are very eclectic, very specific, if you're really into dragon tattoos and that's something you want to follow, just type it in, the topic will show up, and then you can follow it. To get started, follow five, six, seven topics. Once you, the things that you follow, the content that you enjoy, you're going to have that, anything that's written about that, the best articles, the best uh, videos, photos, audios on those subjects are going to show up every day in your cover stories, in your Flipboard cover stories. So you can always add more content topics that you enjoy. You can always take away ones that you don't want to find out and don't want to hear about anymore. Very easy to customize and add topics, take them away. The app will regularly suggest things for you to learn more about. And they're like, oh, you're, you've been interested in this and this. We suggest these. So it's cool to be able to add things and see also. I always find it interesting to see what Flipboard thinks I might be interested in. So yes. We also have um, find and follow tutorials that we can share on Twitter with you. Um, you can bookmark those, save it for later, um, you know, kind of brush up on, on how to exactly do all this. That's correct. And we're always standing by. So after this webinar, if you ever have any questions, go ahead, tweet us or email us, and we're just we're happy to stand by and help you. And I know a lot of you listening are attending uh, the Taipei West Conference next week. And actually, the three of us are going to be there in person. So if you see us and you're like, wait, that thing you talked about, show it to me, or something else, we're there. Pull us aside. We're more than happy to talk about Flipboard all day long. 
So you can't follow the content you enjoy. You're going to be connected to leading thinkers and trusted sources on the topic. And then the more content you follow, the more you refine it, the better your Flipboard experience is going to be and the more tailored to you it's going to be. And it's cool because you can have it really tailored to both your personal and your professional use. You don't have to be like, right, this is my blogging profile. I can only follow this. You can follow anything that's interesting to you. All right. So once you've found content you enjoy and you're starting to see things on your stream that's interesting to you, then you can start flipping things into Flipboard magazines, which is the way you organize it. So if it were in the real world, it would be ripping articles out of paper magazines and filing them in a filing cabinet, right? <laughs> Every Luckily, one of us had a grandmother who used to do that, right? Luckily we don't have to do this anymore. We don't. It's so much easier. Now you click the little plus sign next to a magazine, next to an article, and you clack. It opens up into a flip this into, and it gives you all of your magazines, or it gives you the option to start a new magazine. And underneath that, as you can see, if you look closely, it'll say, what's interesting about this? And if you add a couple words and say, I really like this article because look at the how, I'm really, I have nothing to say about that woman. <laughs> Do you have something to say about that woman's makeup? You're like, well, um, these comments that you can flip with your articles can be agreement or yeah. dissent really? or contextual to, can, yeah. you know. Why you're flipping this. Yeah. It's a way to start the conversation. It also helps the Flipboard search engine say, oh, a lot of people are commenting on this article. It must be of interest, and it will bubble it a little bit higher in people's streams. So the more metadata you can include, like the content that you can include in that helps us find great content. Or helps me, I really, find great content to share with people. So hit that plus, collect content. It puts it together in this gorgeous magazine. The photos get really beautifully featured. Um, and then you can share the magazine or even just the flips just by clicking the share button. You can share all of it with anybody you want. Wait, I think I skipped ahead. Share with others. Look, I was ahead. <laughs> so share, sharing magazines and sharing flips is really the tip of the button. You touch the button, whether you're on um, a Mac, on an Android, on a Windows phone, or on the web, you can share via email, via text. You can share through many different social media spaces. And you can, I often, I have a lot of friends who are, um, I find articles, I share it with them. They can open the magazine, the article without being on Flipboard, they can still read it. So really neat way to be like, it's rather different than my husband's uncle he likes to clip magazine articles and then write a post-it and then put it in an envelope and then send it to us. <laughs> this is a whole lot easier than that and you don't have to go to the post office. It's in your pocket, yeah. It's so much better. <laughs> um, and we have another tutorial, the share tutorial. Also quick for you guys to watch if you follow that link. We'll share the links on Twitter again to show you how you can share that content. And you, when you're sharing, you can add a note like, you can say, I'm sharing this because, and it adds it to it. You can also engage with hashtags when you're sharing Twitter, yes. especially if something's trending. Yes, definitely, right? Build your authority that way. That's a cool way to do it, too. All right. Um, customization is kind of at the heart of everything Flipboard does. Your Flipboard profile, your Flipboard cover story stream can feature so much more than just articles. You can have images, video, sound. You can incorporate Twitter lists. Um, you can incorporate specific Twitter hashtags. Uh, for instance, if you wanted to keep an eye on the hashtag flip blogger stream, you could incorporate that whenever something was tweeted, it would show up in your cover story stream. You can incorporate your Tumblr, your LinkedIn, your YouTube, your Google+, your SoundCloud, your Flickr account, or your 500px accounts. That is a lot of content. Yeah. If you have one of each of those yeah. accounts, it's like... <laughs> These are bloggers. They probably do. Yeah. It's so easy to make a magazine from all of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, you can also search for your RSS feed in the search function. We can walk you through that too uh, later if you want. Uh, search for your RSS feed so that you see your own posts in your cover stories, and then you can easily flip them into the relevant magazines. So it's all there. 
the Twitter access is really cool because uh, sometimes following those Twitter lists is really frustrating. The beauty of it is it's all in the same app. It's all showing up there. It's all right there at your fingertips. You can reply to a tweet. You can share it. You can flip the tweet and save them. It's so hard to save tweets otherwise. Um, so we've talked a little bit about Fliplogger, but we haven't explained what it is. So Flipboard started a couple weeks ago, maybe a, a program called the Fliplogger program, which is designed to help bloggers get the most out of Flipboard possible. We want to make this the most useful tool in your entire arsenal of blogging tools. So we put together this program, which is going to share tips, insights, recommendations, lots of inspiration, because we're going to be featuring different bloggers and how they're using Flipboard. And um, we want to show you how you can participate. Oh, and the other thing is, this counterpart to us helping you is we also want the feedback to see how we can help you better. So definitely, this is a two-way conversation. So there are a couple ways you can participate in Flipblogger. Um, the very, very first step is to follow the Flipblogger profile on Flipboard. Um, it's not your regular profile. It's a little bit of a meta profile. So it's you'll find flips of interest for bloggers. So articles that we think is going to have are, are going to have interesting information, uh, things that have just come out, cool plugins, different tips. Uh, we put all those into a magazine called Blogging Tips for Bloggers. And then we also have a bunch of metazines. Metazine is a magazine made up of magazines because you can flip people's profiles, you can flip magazines, you, it's not just articles. So we've put together metazines made up of other Flipboard magazines showcasing how bloggers are using Flipboard. So in the food metazine on Flipblogger, I've showcased a number of food blogger magazines showcasing how they're using Flipboard. So it's a really great place to go get some inspiration. How are people using Flipboard? What have they done that's different? Oh, maybe I could do this. And it's also a great place to get inspiration on what to write about, what to share, a good place to go find other bloggers to follow on Flipboard so that you can start seeing their content in your stream too. Um, second thing you can do is to start creating magazines that showcase your content or might be relevant to bloggers because then we will have magazines to flip into the Flipblogger account. Uh, third, sign up for the Flipblogger newsletter. Uh, we will tweet out the link so that you can sign up. It's a email goes out once a month. It's going to include tips. It's going to include inspiration. It's going to include uh, links to blog posts that we've written for the Flipblogger audience different things that we think will be relevant to the audience. Um, you've possibly been using it, but we invite you to follow the Flipblogger hashtag on Twitter. People are going to be tweeting blog posts, tips, information relevant to the Flipblogger audience using that hashtag. You could even follow that hashtag in Flipboard and have it part of your stream, because that true. would be fancy. <laughs> um, it's like a meta Flipboard. Uh, email us. Absolutely, email us, shoot us an email, let us know about your experiences and projects, let us know what you're working on, especially if you're doing something seasonal or timely. If there is something that is trending that you have written about and you wanna make sure we know about it, shoot us an email, we will do our best to help you um, promote that, make sure that gets seen through the audience, by the audience. And then also blog about how you're using Flipboard. What are you doing that's different? How has it helped you? What have you loved about it? Share those links with us. Tweet them. Tweet them with the hashtag Flipblogger. Jen here is going to keep an eye out for all of those posts. We will retweet them. We will share them with our audience. I also would love to see if you already embed your magazines on your website. We'd love to see screenshots. And, yes, absolutely. Um, your URLs. We'd love to see that. Um, yeah, we're always looking for bloggers to interview. We are always looking to hear how uh, Flipboard has changed or enhanced your blogging experience. So by all means, keep in touch with us. Um, Want to get started? We have four things that you can do right now to help you get started and really get started on the right foot. So first and foremost, set up your Flipboard profile. Um, as we said earlier, super easy to do, but take a minute to write a really clear descriptive bio so that other Flipboard readers really have an idea about who you are, what you're gonna be flipping, what you're interested in. 
um, and have a better sense of who you are. Writing a really great descriptive bio allows the Flipboard search engine to share your profile when people are looking, say, for bloggers or food bloggers or shoe bloggers or any kind of specific blogger. Make sure that says it in your bio so it'll help other people find you more easily. Um, there is no way to actually have a hyperlinked blog URL on your uh, profile page, but we do invite you to share your URL in your bio. People can copy and paste it. It just gives people that one more place to go find you and stalk you. <laughs> in a blog good way. Stalking. It's in such a good way. way. Blog but <laughs> Some of my best friends have been people who've stalked my blog. <laughs> so uh, next step happens on your blog, not on Flipboard. So we want you to give your readers a really easy way to find you on Flipboard. So there is, um, and Mia's about to tweet the link, there is a page on Flipboard that shares a whole bunch of different tools that are helpful for bloggers. So the first one you can is find there is the follow button. You can add your follow button on your sidebar on your blog, follow me on Flipboard. It'll make it easy for people to find you, follow you, make sure they're adding you and getting your content on their own Flipboard profile. You can also, as we said, embed a magazine or two on your site, showcase, give people a little bit of a taste of what it is you're doing on Flipboard. And then we would love it if you would make it easy for your readers to flip your content. Nothing is better than word of mouth marketing. Let the people who love your content do the blog content promotion for you. Make it easy for them to share it with people. So odds are high, you already have a social share and plugin on your site. If it is either add this, share this, or add to any, you can just go in and add Flipboard as one of the services that show up in that list of, um, in that list that they show it, um, I can't speak anymore, um, in that list of different services that people can use to share their po your posts, Flipboard will just show up with the Flipboard icon there. If you're not using one of those social sharing plugins, you can add the Flip It button, which you'll find on that tools page. Um, so Flip It button, very quick, add it to there, and then people can start flipping your content for you. And then to make it easy for you to add content, you can add the Flip bookmarklet to your browser, which means that wherever you are on the web, you can click Flip and flip it into that. Okay. And then um, when you're sharing, if you're reading things on your phone, if you click share for any article that you see, Flipboard will be one of the options so you can share to Flipboard. All right. I think that is all of our tips. And we have a couple questions for you guys. Right back. We're trying to... Hi, we're back. And we're back. <laughs> Uh, our first question was from Mark Simpson. What differentiates Flipboard from other curation sites like Pinterest? Well, do you want to take this one? So Flipboard has a bunch of depth. It's not just lifestyle, pretty pictures, but also news, tech, sports, great stories that move the world forward. That is our motto. Mm -hmm. um, Pinterest, you see an image, then you have to click through to the sites to see it. On Flipboard, you're gonna see a snippet of what it is you'll be reading even before you click through. So you'll see the images, you'll see the start of the text, and if there's more to be read, you can be taken to the website. So it's a little bit more depth than just Pinterest. And you can have multiple media types in a magazine. So it's not just articles, you could do photos, GIFs, videos, and a SoundCloud links. You can see a GIF on Jen's profile page. Her profile oh, image is a GIF. <laughs> <laughs> we also have partnerships with the world's biggest media companies like the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, Condé Nast Properties, and uh, today we just launched Pop Sugar. Yes, Pop Sugar is exciting. Britain Co. is also a partner, so there's a lot of really cool articles like that. You're going to get all of that. It's, it's a lot more robust, um, and a, sometimes Pinterest, you know, you just picture after picture after picture. If you have Flipboard on your phone, it's really like flipping through a magazine, like you can glance at the beginning of the article, so it's a little bit more engaging. We have a question from Emily, AKA Colorado Mom. Hi, Em. <laughs> is there a widget to put on a site to share the magazine? There sure is. What a fantastic question. <laughs> Every time you create a magazine, you can embed that magazine anywhere you want. So in this, essentially, the magazine embed function is the widget. So uh, the website you need to know is about.flipboard.com slash tools. And you scroll down to the magazine links section. 
you grab the HTML code and you embed it into your blog or website. Yeah, or you can actually do it from the magazine. If you are in your magazine, there's a little button underneath the head image that says edit. If you go in there, inside there's an embed function that allows you to get the HTML code to embed it in your sidebar or in a blog post or in the email signature of your email or et cetera, et cetera. Oh, we have a question from Awesomeism Mom. Hi, we featured you. Hi. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> how can we help spread how awesome Clipboard is for bloggers? <laughs> well, thank you, first of all. We love hearing <laughs> that. That makes us a little teary. Um, email us. Um, if you have people that you think are doing really cool things that you'd want us to feature, let us know. Tell your friends. Share your magazines on all your social media sites. When you've made a really great magazine, if you share it, it gives people a chance to come check out what it looks like. So that's helpful. And we love to work with bloggers. So to get the word out about Flipboard, we want to know about conferences. We want to have meetups. Um, on social, you can share and let people know. You can share a tutorial video that we're going to tweet out in a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, very quick 101 uh, video. Um, you can also share on your blogs and tell us like how you're using Flipboard and why is it so great. Yeah, that's the most helpful. If you do love what's happening on Flipboard and how it's helped you, write a quick blog post, say what you love about it, and we'll be sure to share it with our audience, but it also help your readers and other bloggers know what's so great about it and why you found it helpful. Make sure to tag us at Flipboard on Twitter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's slash how we're hashtag <laughs> flip blogger. Um, a question from DB Landis. Landis. How can we add our RSS feed? So you search for it in um, you search for the exact URL on mobile. So uh, it won't work on the web. You have to search on mobile on your mobile device uh, for the exact URL of your RSS. And if you can't find it, email us and we can help. So So blog. here's the caveat on this. You will not be feeding your RSS feed into the mainstream. The only one who'll see it is you, but it'll make it easy to flip the posts you want flipped into magazines. So you'll see them. It makes it easy to flip them. Awesome. I think that's it. Those are Any all other questions, questions? last-minute questions? If you have questions, you haven't thought about them yet, if you're watching this after the fact and we aren't live anymore, either tweet questions to us at Flipboard, hashtag them FlipBlogger, or email us FlipBlogger at Flipboard.com. We'll get back to you. If you are going to, one of the lucky people who are going to see us live in Santa Fe uh, next week, find us, um, ask us questions, and we'll be really happy to sit down show you on the app things that we can do, show you things on the web, anything you want to know. Anything else? No. Nope. I think we're good. We'll see you on Flipboard then. Thanks Bye. so much. Bye.